So my name is Stéphane Boissel. I'm uh, head of corporate strategy at uh, Sangamo. I was previously CEO of uh, Tixel, a Cartier company that was sold to Sangamo at the end of uh, last year. And I was part of the package when the company was sold. <laughs> Oops. And obviously, here we are. So Sangamo is a genomic medicine company. Uh, this is the way we define ourselves, and sometimes we are asked, so what does that mean? That means that we develop drugs based on the genomic materials or genomic information of the patient, and we are somewhat agnostic as to the kind of technology or medicine that we develop eventually. Uh, Sangamo is well known for its uh, editing technology. It's called Zingfinger nucle Nuclease Technology. It was uh, developed more than 20 years ago today. And this technology has been uh, used in uh, human testing of uh, more than 100 patients to date, which is, as you can imagine, the uh, largest population uh, um, uh, who has ever received uh, um, an editing technology. Uh, we also like to define ourselves as the uh, only uh, gene editing technology that is doing gene therapy and the only uh, gene therapy company that has a proprietary editing technology. So we do, if I can make it, yes, we do gene therapy. Uh, this is something that we are not the only one doing. Uh, this is canonical gene therapy. It is known by the regulators. It is known by the patient community. It is known by the physician, by the hospitals. And it is starting to be known by the uh, payers as well. We use the ZFN technology. To do gene edited cell therapy. There's something wrong with that. Okay, so it's not me? No, 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 no. This is next and back. Okay, that was me. So we use the Zingfinger technology uh, ex vivo to develop gene edited uh, cell therapy. Um, and this is something that we know how to do. This is, uh, I mean, when we started clinical development with the ZFN technology, it was. Uh, uh, more than 10 years ago in HIV patient. We have been doing it for more than 10 years. Uh, we've treated uh, more than 100 patients with that technology. And this is a, a technology that also is started to be known by the patient, the scientific community and the payers. Uh, there is one challenge that we all have with that kind of technology is the scalability. Uh, today, it seems to work for um, you know, so small scale uh, manufacturing, so let's say niche indication on the big challenge that this industry will be facing, us, but not only us, the whole industry, is whether we will be able to uh, make it scalable and to address large uh, unmet medical needs in the future. And then we do in vivo editing. Uh, we use our uh, ZFN technology to do genome editing on gene regulation. And we believe uh, this is the medicine of the future. So we start with gene therapy, which is the present, which uh, everybody, I mean, not everybody, but a lot of people uh, do, uh, which has product uh, approved in the market and which is, uh, uh, let's say, manageable or at least uh, more easily manageable from a supply chain management viewpoint. We do uh, cell therapy, which is the present on the near term, and we do uh, genome editing and gene regulation, and we see that last part of what we do at Sangamo as being really the medicine of the future. Uh, if you look at the portfolio, this is a very classical way of looking at the portfolio, but I prefer to use this way. Uh, in gene therapy, we have a combination of partnered and non-partnered program. Our lead program is in hemophilia A, and I will speak to that program later in this presentation. Uh, this program is partnered with uh, Pfizer. The second program in that uh, gene therapy franchise is in Fabry disease. This is a proprietary program, and we have a series of uh, non-partner uh, other gene therapy programs that are at an uh, early or earlier uh, stage of development. In uh, ex vivo, our gene edited cell therapy, uh, we have uh, two partner, two products, excuse me, that are partnered with uh, Sanofi. Uh, one is in uh, beta thalassemia, and the other one, which is more or less the same product, is in sickle cell disease. We conduct the phase one, two trial at Sangamo uh, for the beta thalassemia program, and Sanofi is conducted the sickle cell disease, and Sanofi, uh, if everything go goes well, should opt in uh, at the end of the phase one, two in beta tal and conduct the registrational study for those two uh, 
uh, indication going forward. We also uh, develop uh, um, a proprietary car direct franchise. The lead asset is called TX200 that is developed in solid organ transplantation and more precisely in mismatch transplantation of kidney. That's the uh, legacy program from uh, Tixel. And for that program, we expect to file a first CTA uh, later during the course of 2019. We also, in cell therapy, have a large alliance with uh, Kite Gilead. And uh, basically, we uh, are uh, using our ZFN technology to change the features of uh, the uh, CAR T uh, program, excuse me, of uh, Kite Gilead, including the CD19 CAR, which is the lead program of that collaboration, for which we expect to, or at least for which Gilead expects to file a first IND during the course of 2019 as well. And then in the in vivo uh, platform, we have two different technologies, genome editing. Uh, two months ago, we've released the first ever uh, preliminary evidence of uh, uh, editing of the human genome uh, in MPS2, MPS1, uh, um, tri in two MPS1 and MPS2 trials. Uh, we, uh, it's fair to say that we are not yet there in terms of therapeutic range, and so although we see some scientific evidence that we have indeed uh, edited the human genome, uh, there is still, uh, uh, let's say, some, uh, some uh, improvement to the technology to be done to reach uh, therapeutic range. And we are uh, bringing to clinical trial uh, later this year a second generation of zinc finger that we are going to use in MPS2 to see whether with this improved technology, which has an improved potency among other features, we can reach the therapeutic level that we have not seen uh, with uh, the, uh, the first generation of pro uh, product that we've used in the MPS1 and MPS2 uh, trial. And then the gene regulation, which is uh, even more futuristic here, we don't uh, replace gene, we don't edit gene, we just regulate the expression of gene. And uh, we have uh, a series of programs, two partner programs. One is uh, in Huntington disease, partnered with Shire Takeda. And uh, they are in IND enabling studies today with that program. One is targeting c 9 off in ALS, and this program is uh, partnered with uh, Pfizer. And the rest of the platform is uh, proprietary. And we have uh, uh, notably one program which is targeting TAU, uh, which uh, is not ready for showtime today, but uh, we've shown some very interesting um, uh, animal data in the past uh, two weeks, and we expect that this technology could be ready for clinical trials in the next, uh, let's say, two to three uh, years. Now I know how it works. Um, so uh, gene therapy for hemophilia A, this is our lead program. This is uh, a program for which uh, we've uh, announced some very interesting clinical data two weeks ago. Um, and uh, we had uh, treated so far four patients in, uh, excuse me, eight patients in four different uh, cohorts, those cohorts. And what we've seen so far is very uh, interesting. As you can see from this uh, linear scale uh, graph, uh, two patients at the highest dose after uh, a few weeks after infusion, so we have to be extremely careful, reach a normal level as defined by the guidelines. I prefer to look at those data with the subsequent slide, which is using a log scale, because with the log scale, you can really see uh, the impact of the dose response curve. Uh, we, have, we are only showing five out of the eight patients, because three patients in the lower dose uh, had no change in their uh, replacement factor uh, treatment regimen. But for the five patients for which we had an impact, or for whom we see uh, an impact in the treatment regimen. It's very interesting to see that first, there was a very rapid uptake of the factor production after the uh, injection of the gene therapy. Second, there seems to be a, a kind of a low intra-patient variability over time. This is a valid statement for the lower dose. We cannot say that yet for the higher dose because we don't have enough uh, duration. There is also, as we can see, uh, kind of a low uh, intra-cohort variability. And last but not least, we are reaching, as I was saying, uh, uh, as of today, or as at the date of the publication of those data, that the two patients treated at the highest dose were in the normal uh, range. So uh, these data are very encouraging. They are very uh, uh, preliminary as well. And we will need to see whether we can uh, um, observe the same, uh, uh, let's say, trend uh, uh, over time. Uh, and so we have said that we were going to 
um, communicate additional data during the course of 2019. And those data will be, uh, of course, showing uh, additional duration for those five patients, but also uh, the SMC that met in uh, uh, late March this year had recommended us to treat up to five additional patients at the highest dose. So hopefully, by the end of the year, we will have additional data on those uh, five patients. And in total, that will be seven patients at the high dose. And again, this is very preliminary. This is uh, still very encouraging. And we are really looking forward to see what will happen to those seven patients over time. In terms of safety profile, very rapidly, uh, we, we have observed the safety uh, profile that is uh, very similar to uh, other canonical gene therapy. We had uh, uh, one uh, uh, patient who had uh, ALT uh, elevation leading to a transaminitis. That patient in the highest dose was uh, treated with uh, uh, steroids. And very importantly, uh, post-treatment of steroids, that patient did not uh, loss uh, factor expression, which was, again, a very encouraging feature. Switching gear now that uh, the time is running, uh, moving to uh, beta thalassemia. This is, uh, as uh, I told you before, a program that is uh, developed uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, Sanofi. We are uh, leading the uh, phase one, two uh, trial, and we should hand that over at one point to Sanofi. Uh, we, uh, this is, um, you know, ex vivo editing of uh, hematopoietic uh, stem cells. Uh, we are uh, knocking out the BC11A announcer, and we've released uh, two weeks ago the first, uh, you know, patient data that was only one patient, uh, a beta zero, beta zero uh, patient that was treated for the first time with that technology. And it's very uh, early to comment those data. What we say, what we can say today is that we've seen proof of uh, evidence. Uh, we've, pre we've seen evidence, excuse me, of editing. Uh, we've seen uh, somewhat of uh, uh, an acceptable safety profile, and we've seen some uh, interesting, but, but I insist, very early uh, um, uh, measurement in terms of uh, total hemoglobin on a percentage of uh, fetal hemoglobin in the total of, uh, hemoglobin of that patient. We expect to enroll six patients in that trial, Hopefully, that will be in 2019, and we expect to give uh, uh, more patient uh, data towards the end of the year in a, in a, in a conference. Very rapidly, the, the, the only thing I can say today on the gene regulation platform, uh, we've released uh, three weeks ago in a, in a conference the first uh, ever uh, primate, I mean non-human primate uh, data using uh, the, the zinc finger uh, protein technology, and we've seen. In, in primate, a very interesting correlation between the expression of the zinc finger protein and the reduction of the tau expression in the brain of uh, the non-human primate. As you can see, the expression uh, level of the FP uh, are the uh, green uh, bullets, and the uh, level of uh, tau expression are the red bullet. And every time we had a significant expression of the uh, ZFP uh, in the brain, we had a significant uh, reduction in tau expression. And as you know, Tau is considered as the next uh, target uh, for uh, Alzheimer treatment. In terms of manufacturing, which is, uh, uh, as we all know, uh, a very uh, critical topic, a strategic asset for gene and cell therapy companies, uh, we have two uh, different aspects. Gene therapy, today we are completing the, manu I mean the, the building of our manufacturing site in Brisbane in our headquarters in California. And uh, we are going to use that facility for small-scale manufacturing. And we've signed recently a, a long-term strategic agreement with Brammer Bio. And the intention is that Brammer Bio will do the large-scale manufacturing, being for phase three and uh, later for commercial uh, usage. In terms of uh, cell therapy manufacturing, today we are relying exclusively on CMO, but we've made the decision to go into manufacturing our own uh, product, and the idea would be, at least for the next few years, to have our own uh, uh, cell therapy manufacturing for small-scale manufacturing, rely, at least at the beginning, on CMO for larger-scale manufacturing, but it's not impossible that we may revisit that uh, strategy in the future, and we may decide to internalize uh, manufacturing at the large scale of cell therapy product in the future, but we are not yet there. 
Just to wrap up, uh, key takeaway uh, messages on Sangamo, uh, we are a genomic medicine uh, company. We do uh, gene therapy, as I was saying. We do ex vivo gene modified cell therapy, and we do uh, in vivo genome editing and gene regulation. We have uh, what we believe uh, a very precise, very efficient, and very specific gene editing technology, which is backed by not only a very robust patent tested, but also by an incredible uh, uh, um, you know, patient experience. As I was saying, this technology has been treated so far ex vivo or in vivo in more than 100 patients. We have a very broad portfolio of uh, product today. Uh, we will have nine products in clinical development by the end of the year, if everything goes well, with the CTA uh, filing and the IND filing. This is a portfolio which we believe is totally unprecedented or unparalleled in this space today. Uh, we have a very uh, significant flows of news in the future. Uh, clinical uh, readout, additional clinical readout from uh, uh, the uh, phase one, two in hemophilia A, from the phase one, two in uh, beta thalassemia and sickle cell disease, from the in vivo genome editing platform with the second generation uh, technology that we expect to start clinical development of during the course of this year and for which we expect to have the first clinical data next year. IND filing uh, for the Kite Gilead CD19 allogenic product. Uh, CTA filing for the first uh, car direct program. This technology has never been tested in man before, so that would be a very important uh, uh, milestone for us, and so on and so forth. And beyond those nine programs in development by the end of the year, we have almost an infinite pipeline as this technology can potentially correct or address any gene uh, in human. And we have, last but not least, a very strong balance sheet. We've raised another $145 million a few weeks ago. We had $400 million at the end of last year at the bank. We have uh, four value, you know, uh, uh, value creating and validating uh, partnering with Pharma, Takeda Shire for Huntington, Pfizer for Hemophilia A, and ALS targeting C9 off, Sanofi Bioverati for Betatal and sickle cell disease, and Kite Gilead for uh, the uh, oncology uh, indication for the editing of T cells and a larger scope of uh, uh, other, other cells as well targeting cancer. And last but not least, we uh, have a very clear manufacturing strategy with uh, very soon our own manufacturing. Uh, um, production uh, facility and uh, also a network of uh, CMO that we can use today for small-scale manufacturing but also for large-scale manufacturing. Right on time. Thank you.